I mean, America's going to hell in a handbasket here, ladies and gentlemen. You're not even supposed to be able to put up a sign or wear a T-shirt, and they're saying that I need to be arrested for racism and a hate crime. And now they're saying if you use the word socialist, it's a hate crime. That's what the hate crime bill that passed the House and is now in the Senate says, that if you hurt someone's feelings, you're arrested and put in prison. Not even if a crime's committed. Hurting feelings. Well, you know what? We're selling the T-shirt that says socialism on it. We sell one that says fascism on it. We sell one that says Infowars.com on it. One that says New World Order. Uh, the mainstream media is giving us credit saying that we started the, the entire Obama joker thing. Well, number one, I'd be proud if I'd started this a month ago in L.A. I didn't. Two weeks ago when they said censor whoever's doing this, they need to be arrested, they're criminals, they're racist. I said, no, it's saying he's a criminal. And people did this to Bush. And so people need to post more of these in legal and lawful places in the commons area. Under common law, you see the posters all over downtown or you see 20 posters on a pole. You can put a poster up, and if they come selectively enforced against you, that's a big civil rights violation. It's just flat wrong, man. It's it's hypocrisy. And people are seeing through this. 90-plus percent of the post and all these newspaper articles, all these TV stories, go read them for yourself. We have them linked on Infowars.com. I mean, there's probably 10, 15, 20 posts saying how ridiculous the hypocrisy is and way to go putting the posters up. Now, I am seeing people post videos on YouTube where since the cops started threatening people and saying this is wrong, they're actually going to post offices and going to police stations and putting them on them. Don't do that. Have your First Amendment. Put it where other people put posters. Put it in the downtown areas. Put it on bulletin boards. Give them to people. But I... I mean, that's what our founding fathers actually did go and put stuff on Redcoat police stations. They actually did do stuff like that. They do stuff like burn images of the Redcoats, you know, out front the police station. And then um, if the Redcoats beat somebody up, they'd stop the Redcoats on the road and beat them up. I'm not calling for any of that. That's evil. That's founding father type stuff. And I'm being somewhat sarcastic, but, but, but seriously, I don't want that to happen because the establishment wants violence to break out. Now, enough said about that. We've now put up a T-shirt. These are in. These are selling. We have these in stock. We're now manufacturing today. We have a three-day turnaround. So today, Saturday, and then Monday. By Tuesday, we'll have these T-shirts. We've made a Bush fascist to show that it is nonpartisan and that uh, – that we're equal opportunity offenders. But under the First Amendment, if we just want to criticize Obama, that's our right as well. And so here is the poster, and everybody can get this T-shirt. It says Infowars.com on the back. But all the Obama ones are available at Infowars.com. And get them while you can. Lord knows they may just go ahead and make all this illegal, and I'm not joking about that. So I want to get Stuart Rhodes' take on that coming up, but not yet. We're going to open the phones up, too, at one 800 259 I know some stations just joined us in the second hour. That's why I'm recapping some top stories. The progressive newspaper is reporting, magazine is reporting, the Pentagon wants the authority to boost 400,000 military personnel in the U.S. This is directly from the congressional record in violation of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. They've already announced 20,000 troops under Brigade Homeland, suddenly from California to Tennessee to upstate New York, from Schenectady, New York, uh, to uh, Arcadia, Iowa, Army, regular Army, National Guard, Marines, State Guards are running checkpoints, searching people, actually arresting people, running DWI checkpoints, things that are seen as popular to acclimate the public. And they admit this is for domestic operations in the Homeland Security documents we broke that we got from people inside Homeland Security, in the Department of Defense documents we broke that were later confirmed mainstream news, in the secret clergy response teams and InfraGuard documents we broke that were years later confirmed to be real. I know they're real. They come directly from sources. <sighs> Massachusetts deputizes... Dentist, paramedics, pharmacists to administer flu vaccine, Boston Globe, for forced inoculations. Uh, we have another one here uh, where the congressman uh, is in the news.
saying that they are preparing for total martial law and using this as the cover to do that. I'm looking for it here in my stack. I'll find it in a moment. There's just too many of these to keep track of. German News is reporting there is live cancer viruses in the main uh, vaccine that's being distributed. So that's why we've got Oath Keepers on and Stuart Rhodes, the founder of it, with us today. And we're going to go to him uh, because Mr. Rhodes started Oath Keepers. He was a high-level aide in Ron Paul's congressional office in his presidential campaign. He's an ex-Army. Stuart Rhodes is the founder and director of Oath Keepers, military veterans and peace officers who will honor their oaths, defend the Constitution, will not just follow orders, We'll stand up for liberty and we'll save the republic. So help us God. Our motto is not on our watch. It's a nonpartisan association of currently serving military reserves, National Guard, peace officers, veterans who swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies foreign and domestic. And he is a Yale Law School graduate and was an Army officer uh, in... Um... Well, I mean, give us your exact bio, Stuart. Oh, I was a paratrooper. I was an enlisted man. I worked for a living. But I was, I was a paratrooper until I was disabled in a parachuting accident. Okay, now let's get started here. Um, you've heard me throw all this out. The main reason I got you on is the Southern Poverty Law Center has put out a report mixing us in with white supremacists, UFO cults, you name it. And specifically, they attack us together here uh, in yeah, yes, this piece. Go ahead. Yes, they do. You bet. Yeah, they, 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 uh, they quote, they quote uh, our interview, in fact, where they say that uh, Roach told conspiracy-minded radio host Alex Jones, imagine if we focus on the police and military, game over for the new world order. And I want to thank them for pulling that quote out. I'd forgotten about that. I think it's a pretty good quote. So, you know. But now they're, they're doing the same thing they've done throughout throughout the last few decades. Anybody who gets to be a threat to the orthodox, um, their orthodox plans, they will attack and try to smear and lump in with racist. And or, or, or they tell you either you're racist because the black president's in office, you must be racist. You oppose anything he does, or you're uh, completely insane, and therefore the government should monitor you, should investigate you, should have a secret file on you, and then should go arrest you if it can. You know, that's, that's, their, that's their program. Did you see the comments in the article where they say that we need to be killed? Have you seen that yet? No, I haven't seen that yet. No, I have not. No, but, but I saw I saw something last night with an Alan Combs show, which was a really horrible interview. All he did, all he wanted to do was was accuse me of being uh, uh, sensationalistic and paranoid. Uh, but he had comments on his on his own side that were pretty atrocious too. You know? Well, so. well, I mean, the Louisville newspapers, the AP, and others are reporting. I'm gonna dig them out and cover them coming up as soon as I find them. Uh, they are Congressman Brown is saying. This is being used for martial law, that Congress has been threatened with martial law. We have now the Pentagon publicly saying they want to deploy 400,000 regular army on the streets of America. I mean, this is an occupation rivaling Baghdad. This is, I mean, this is really happening. Yeah, well, uh, jumping over to the, the flu idea, that, that has always been the one thing that people throw back at us about our ten orders. They say, what about a pandemic? And so I can't think of a, of a stronger pretext short of a nuke going off in an American city um, for, for trying to declare martial law. But as you know, martial law has no constitutional basis whatsoever. So I, I get a sick and tired of hearing all these politicians throwing around the word martial law. They have no idea what they're talking about. Because martial law is the absolute absence of the law. It's the will of the commander on the battlefield. And nowhere in our Constitution is there some kind of escape clause that says when the weather's, when the weather's bad, you can suspend the Second Amendment like they did in Katrina. Or if there's a flu outbreak, you can suspend the Constitution and impose martial law. It doesn't exist. And so when you look at Article 4, Section 4, that's your answer right there. What does it say right there? It says that the uh, national government shall secure to the states a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. So what it's saying there is that you have to have the permission of the legislature of the state, or only if the legislature cannot be convened, the governor of the state. And only then can the federal government come into a state. And so that's my first stop when it comes to the constitutionality of any of these plans that NORTHCOM, FEMA, DHS has. They're acting as though the states don't exist anymore. 
Well, the issue, too, is 